Hi guys, welcome back to another video about graph neural networks. This time I want to talk about graph attention networks presented by Velichkovic et al. You can find the paper in the video description. They are a popular variant of GNNs that use the attention mechanism, which is well known in other machine learning fields. I will start with a really short recap on GNNs, but assume that you already have a basic knowledge in this field. So let's start with the basics. For a graph like the one shown here, each node can be described with a node feature vector. For a molecule, this feature vector would contain information about the atoms. For a social network, attributes about the person, for instance. Regarding the structural information of the graph, we have the adjacency matrix. It tells us which nodes are connected. In my last GNN videos, I mainly looked at how message passing is performed on one specific node. This time I thought I illustrate the calculation for all nodes, as it's typically done in the geometric deep learning frameworks. This means we stack the node features into a matrix. As you might know, all the neural network calculations are typically performed as matrix multiplications. This is also the case for GNNs, of course. So here we get a dimension of 5 times 4 because we have 5 nodes and each of them has 4 feature values. Okay, now how is this node feature matrix used in a general graph neural network layer? For graph neural networks, the general formula describing the update of a single node embedding looks like the one shown here. Later in this video, we will see how we can extend this formula to use the attention mechanism. First, we transform the node features by multiplying them with a shared weight matrix. This learnable linear transformation converts the node features into higher level features. Essentially, that is where the learning takes place. The weight matrix comes from a fully connected neural network and in this case the input would be the shape of our node feature vector, here it's 4, and the output would be the shape of the node embeddings, so here I chose 8 for instance. So in other terms, when multiplying with this weight matrix, we simply pass each of our node feature vectors through a single layer neural network. Now for each individual node, we want to do that only for the neighbors and then sum them up into one embedding. That is the sum in the formula, where i is the current node and j are all the neighbor nodes of that specific node. Matrix multiplication-wise, we achieve this by multiplying with the adjacency matrix. This will automatically give us the sum of the transformed neighbor messages. The adjacency matrix has a shape of 5 times 5, which means number of nodes times number of nodes. Finally, in the formula, there is an activation function that is typically applied. Here it's called sigma. So this basic overview shows how the first layer of our graph neural network could look like. The outputs are the updated node embeddings. So here we have five nodes with a size of eight. These nodes contain the information of their neighbors and the information of their own node features. I call them H prime here. For every other layer, we would now have a different shape for the node embeddings and the weight matrix as we would use these embeddings as new input. Let's have a look at these matrix multiplications for node 1. First, we transform the node feature matrix by multiplying it with the learnable weight matrix. We multiply the first row with the first column, then the second column and so on, until we have a vector with a size of 8. We do this multiplication for the other nodes as well, so that we get 5 vectors. I will denote these vectors with h star, we will see them again in a second. They can be interpreted as transformed node feature states. Now we are only interested in the neighbor nodes of node 1, that's why we multiply everything with the adjacency matrix. If we do that for node 1, so the first row of the adjacency matrix, the vectors for node 4 and 5 are dropped, because the adjacency matrix has a zero there. Note that I added self loops in this adjacency matrix, so that each node is also connected to itself. This way we can easily include the feature vector of node 1 into this aggregation. 
Now the way matrix multiplication works is that we multiply each row with each column and then sum up the values. That means in this case we are left now with the sum of these transformed node features of node 1, 2 and 3. And that's exactly what goes into each of our updated node embeddings. So h1 star, h2 star and h3 star together builds the new embedding for node 1, so h prime 1. In this step we can also apply the final activation function sigma and we get a new embedding like the one shown here. Of course this is done simultaneously for all nodes when we perform these matrix multiplications and that's pretty much the whole process in most of the GNN layers. Now let's find out how this process can be extended with the attention mechanism. The basic idea of attention in graph neural networks is to additionally learn how important Node.js features are for Node i. This importance is called the attention coefficient. We can see it as a weight for each edge of the neighbors that tells us how much attention we should pay to that specific node. So here it's visualized for the neighbors of node 1. In this case the model should pay more attention to node 2 when aggregating those new embeddings. The attention mechanism is quite popular in natural language processing and used in many state-of-the-art models such as transformers. Text data in machine learning is usually modeled as a sequence of words and the words are represented as word vectors. The idea of attention is to learn the relationship between the different words, which means how important the specific word i is to another word j. For example, for the word play here, the word children is probably more important than the word the. Using the attention coefficients, we can then give more context to a certain word vector. And now this should look familiar to you, because that's exactly what we want to do with our graph. We want to learn which nodes we should look at when updating the embedding. In fact, NLP on text data and geometric deep learning on graph data are pretty similar. We can see the sentence as a graph, the words as nodes and the word vectors as node feature vectors. Attention works well on text data because it works independent of the number and order of the words. This is also the case for graph data. We usually have a different number of nodes and need to consider the permutation invariance. That's why attention can be applied on graph structured data as well. If you're interested in learning more about attention in natural language processing, I can recommend a great video series on YouTube, which I will link in the video description. Now let's go back to the attention coefficients. This is the basic formula how we can calculate them. hi and hj are node feature vectors that are multiplied with the weight matrix. So this can be seen as the h star I introduced previously. Remember that we do this multiplication to apply a learnable transformation on the node features. A is an attention mechanism that returns the attention coefficient, so the importance for two of our nodes. We see in a second how this attention mechanism looks like in the graph attention paper. Don't worry, it's pretty simple. First, however, let's take a look at one more thing that is usually done in self-attention. If we calculate these attention coefficients, we might get very different values for different nodes. For example, for node 1 and its neighbors, the values are 0.5 and 0.7. For node 4 and its neighbors, we might get values of 6 and 10. In order to compare these values for different nodes, we need to normalize them. And this is simply done using the softmax function. The softmax function makes the values sum up to 1. So for node 1, we would now, for instance, have 0.8 and 0.2. We calculate the softmax function as fraction between e to the power of the attention coefficient between two specific nodes divided by the sum of this expression for all neighbors. These normalized values are then denoted with alpha. We could compute the attention coefficients for all node pairs, but we can also only focus on the neighbor nodes. So here for node 1 it would be node 2 and node 3. If we do that, it's called masked attention, because we masked out all other nodes. So now let's have a look at what this attention mechanism does. 
First of all, there exist many different possibilities for calculating these attention coefficients. So the approach chosen in the graph attention network paper is just one possibility. In the paper, they simply choose a shared single layer neural network. The input for this network are the two transform node feature vectors for an edge. So for instance, for node one and two. And the output indicates the importance between these nodes. So the attention coefficient. This can be calculated for each node pair. Expressed as a formula, this is how the full attention mechanism used in the paper looks like. Most parts are already familiar to us. We see the normalization using the softmax function and we recognize the two transform node embeddings we pass in as inputs. These two node feature vectors are simply concatenated as it's shown in this illustration. So these two pipes are the concatenation operation. When we pass them through a single layer neural network, it means nothing else but multiplying them with a weight vector. In contrast to the paper, I named this weight vector in this formula W indexed with an A to emphasize that it is a learnable weight vector. So if you check out this formula in the paper, it's slightly different regarding the naming convention. Additionally, we see that a leaky ReLU activation is applied on each of the outputs. The reason why this is done is that we want to emphasize positive relationships between nodes. This means we cut off pretty much all of the negative values and just keep the positive values. So this is the leaky ReLU activation. So now we know what the attention coefficients are and how to calculate them. But how do we include them in a graph neural network layer? The way how this is done is simply by multiplying each of the neighbor states with the corresponding attention coefficient for that edge. This can be seen as a linear combination of node feature vectors weighted with the importance for each node. As a result, the important elements are amplified and the less important ones are suppressed. So let's go back to the overview from before. There is only one thing we need to add here. We still multiply the node feature matrix with the learnable weight matrix and multiply all of that with the adjacency matrix. This gives us the new embeddings for each of the nodes. The new part now is that we add the attention coefficients in the summation. We can think about this like learning values between 0 and 1 for each of the edges in the adjacency matrix. In fact, this can be seen as having a weighted adjacency matrix where each of the non-zero elements are the attention coefficients. If we have self-loops for each node, it would look like this. It's sufficient to only show the upper triangular of the matrix as it's symmetrical. So to finish this video, I wanted to show a final summary of the attention mechanism for one node. Here it's node one. We collect the neighbor nodes and the node feature vector of node one and pass everything through a learnable linear transformation. This means we multiply with W. What we get out are those intermediate node states which I denoted with H star previously. For each edge we grab the two corresponding node states and pass them through this shared single layer neural network. This gives us the attention coefficients alpha. Then we sum up everything as a linear combination weighted with the calculated alphas and then we have the final updated embedding H prime for node 1. So there are two places where the learning happens in such a graph attention layer, the transformation matrix W and the weight vector in the attention coefficient. To stabilize the learning process of self-attention, multi-head attention is typically performed. That simply means we not only have one attention mechanism, but several independent ones. You can read more about this in the paper if you're interested. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Leave a comment if you have any questions and let me know if you're interested in more graph neural network content. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.